Hi, and welcome to another VS tutorial. Today, I'll guide you through VSS audio and MIDI player and show you how to use it to drive your visuals. As always, I'm Nuno's avatar, helping him out while he keeps turning VS even better. Let's get started. One of the easiest ways to use your music in VS is by loading it into the built-in player. With a single audio file, you can feed the audio modulators to trigger and modulate your visuals. You can also use it with visualizer materials, as we covered in the previous oscillators and visualizers tutorial. In addition to audio, you can load single or multi-track MIDI files and use their MIDI notes to trigger or modulate your visuals. When we first created VS, we wanted to provide a simple way to build and test presets on the fly. For that reason, we included several demo files, each with both audio and MIDI in a variety of styles, so you can focus on your visuals. Now let's take a closer look at the player panel. Let's start with an overview of the player panel. To open it, click the player panel icon. In the top left corner, you'll find the settings button. When autoplay on record is enabled, pressing the record button will automatically start playback. You can also choose whether the player should stop when the recording stops. Since VS allows you to include audio in your recordings, these settings help keep your visuals and audio perfectly in sync. Next, you'll see the current playhead time. Start will play your files, stop will stop them, the loop button toggles looping for both audio and MIDI files. You'll also find the volume knob, which controls the audio file's volume. This knob is only available when an audio file is loaded. The folder icon opens the file browser, allowing you to load your audio and MIDI files. VS includes several demo files, each with a matching audio and MIDI pair, so you can make full use of both audio and MIDI-based modulation right away. When you load a demo file, both components are loaded automatically. You can also load your own audio and MIDI files. For now, let's choose the Techno 1 demo. Choose Techno 1 and press Load. After loading an audio file, you'll see its waveform displayed here. At the bottom, you'll find the currently loaded files. In this case, we have both an audio file and a MIDI file, and you can switch between their views. You can click anywhere in the display area to change the current position of the audio and MIDI files. This can be useful to work on specific parts of long files. Let's take a closer look at the MIDI view. Here, each MIDI track appears as an individual row showing its MIDI events. This MIDI file has seven tracks each routed to a MIDI channel matching its index. Track 1 outputs to channel 1, track 2 to channel 2, and so on. Each row displays the track's MIDI events with their start and end times, so you can easily tell when each note begins and ends, useful for timing triggers and choose which inputs to use. In this example, you can see that while the first three tracks have various short MIDI events, tracks 4, 5, and 6 have long notes. The lock button allows you to lock the loaded files in the player, meaning they will stay loaded when switching between patches. When saving a patch in VS, you can choose to save the current loaded files with it. Let's save this patch by clicking the floppy disk icon and enable the option to include loaded media. Now let's create a new patch. Remove loaded files by clicking the X next to their names and load the Techno2 demo. Now let's change the background image using the arrows in the layer thumbnail. Click the floppy icon, enable include media option and save this patch as a new one. As you can see, switching between the two patches also switches the loaded files. Now press play and enable lock. Changing patches will no longer replace the media. This is especially useful when testing multiple patches with the same song or loop. To use the audio information, you can either open the audio modulator section and select the player input, then use the AM sources in the modulation matrix to modulate any parameters you want, 
You can also use audio to drive your visualizer materials. Just make sure that in the layer's input properties, the player source is selected. MIDI works a bit differently. MIDI events will trigger the EGS, which you can then route through the modulation matrix to control your desired parameters. And remember that you can achieve polyphony by setting the layer's trigger mode to MIDI. If you want to understand more about audio and MIDI, please check the VSS modulations tutorial. And that's it for today. I hope you now have a clearer understanding of how the player works and how you can use it to create your visuals. I'm Nuno's avatar, guiding you through these tutorials so you can master VS. See you in the next one.